In this tutorial, we are going to start the process of doing polar alignment. Polar alignment is certainly one of the first and probably most important steps, uh, but also the one with the most tools and most variety of approaches. So there isn't any one particular way to do this. We're gonna cover the most common approaches, uh, generally the polar scope and a couple computer assisted software applications. But what's important here is that they all basically do the same thing. They give you some sort of reference and some feedback so that you can adjust your mount's altitude and azimuth settings, right? The altitude and then the sort of east to west rotation uh, so that your mount is accurately lined up with the Earth's rotation. That's all it is. So whether it's software, whether it's, uh, you know, looking through a visual scope, they all basically do the same thing. So if you understand that, then you realize that there are going to be pros and cons to different approaches in terms of what you have available, how much time you have available, and how much accuracy that you need. So there is no one right way to do polar alignment, and each approach has its benefits and drawbacks. So it's really best to understand these trade-offs, and this is something we covered in our prior video talking about polar alignment, pointing models and tracking and your style of observation, whether it's visual or imaging, your focal length of your telescope and so forth. Um, there are new techniques and new software being developed all the time to try to simplify this and make it easier. Um, if you have an approach or technique that you really like or maybe a different tutorial that you want to point out, please in the comments below, uh, mention it. We would love to hear more about it. And, uh, you know, we're of course always learning as well. So in this series, we're going to cover polar alignment in four basic segments. Uh, first, uh, and in this video, we're going to cover the things you need to do when doing polar alignment, regardless of which approach you use, including some tips on how to make it easier uh, for using it with your lost Mandy mount. Second, we're going to go in depth uh, using polar alignment using the lost Mandy polar scope, which is a visual aid. And then third, we are going to cover using popular computer assisted approaches. So in other words, software and some hardware uh, that are usually best for astrophotography. And that includes PoleMaster and SharpCap. And then finally, we're going to answer some common questions uh, around the polar alignment process and equipment that we often get. What's important is you don't need to watch all of these videos, obviously. You want to watch this one, which is important because it's uh, true for any approach uh, that you take. And you want to watch the question and answer section, section at the end because that might uh, answer a question you have about this. Uh, but then in, in the middle, you want to just pick the video of the approach that you're using and just watch that one. If you're not sure, you certainly are welcome to watch all of them. And as I mentioned, there might be some comments in the description below. You might want to take a look for what other people are doing. Now we're going to talk about what to do before you're doing the polar alignment process in the setup procedure. The assumption is that you have done everything that you need to do in the previous steps we've done through our video tutorial series on getting your mount properly configured, set up. You want your telescope on there. You want it to be balanced correctly. And now we're going to kind of move into how to do the polar alignment. Uh, chances are you're going to move directly from polar alignment into observing. And by observing, of course, I mean either visual or imaging. So it's important you want to get all that stuff right ahead of time. You'll eventually get into a groove and you'll know which of these things uh, you can do ahead of time, you know, during the daytime or when it's still light out and which of the things just need to be checked. But uh, eventually what will happen is you'll find that polar alignment will become a lot easier and a lot faster and you're just going to kind of develop a rhythm around that. So the polar alignment process itself needs to be done when you can actually see stars. So usually it's in the evening, kind of at the start of your uh, observing session. But there are some things you can do ahead of time, either during the day or immediately before that, that will speed things up. First thing is to set up your altitude and azimuth to be roughly accurate. So on your altitude setting, you should set it to be roughly equal to your latitude setting. So here in Burbank, our latitude is roughly 34 degrees, and you can actually adjust your mount uh, to be about 34 degrees. And again, you're kind of rough in what your altitude is going to need to be. Second thing, when you set up your azimuth, you should start by having it roughly in the middle as a starting point. You have about plus or minus eight degrees on either side, and you don't want to find out as you're doing polar alignment that you kind of max out one end or the other. So it's a good place to start with ha having being set up right in the middle of those limits. For your initial mount setup, 
Again, you can do this part uh, prior to dusk, but this is where you're actually physically moving the telescope out into the place that you're going to be observing. You need a spot on the ground that is solid and unmoving. Concrete is really ideal. Uh, there are ways to cool down the concrete if you have a particularly hot day, but hopefully it's in a shaded area. Uh, and you wanna avoid things like grass or soft earth that is going to shift and it's gonna cause you problems through the night. You just don't want anything to be moving around. Second, when you put your tripod down, you want one leg facing north. Uh, if you're in the southern hemisphere, of course, you want that leg facing south. This is not a hard and fast rule, but one of the things that you're gonna be doing is trying to rough in the direction of either north or south, uh, depending on your hemisphere, uh, as a starting point. You can use an inexpensive magnetic compass or a compass app on your mobile device to kind of rough this in, but you do wanna kind of get basically pointing north or again in the southern hemisphere, basically pointing south. And you really wanna to try to make this as accurate as you can. It doesn't have to be critically accurate, but what you don't wanna find out is that as you're moving your azimuth left to right, you're running out of space. Next, you're going to attach your RA and deck axis. Um, if you have it already set up, that's fine, but usually if you're kind of setting it up for the first time, that's what you need to do. The RA extension kit that we offer makes life a lot simpler in this regard, and I like to use it because I can just attach the deck axis with my counterweights kind of already in the place uh, that they need to be. At this point, you're gonna wanna use the bubbles, uh, the bubble levels on the tripod to level out your tripod. Uh, it's not super critical that the tripod be level, but generally speaking, it's a good idea to keep it level. It will make adjusting your polar alignment uh, a lot easier. And we'll cover this in a little bit more detail in the question and answer section. But use the bubble levels and the uh, individual leg adjustments to level out your tripod at this point. Don't let your OCD take over. I know it's really like you want to kind of get it ac you know, as perfect as you possibly can, and that's really not critical. You just want it generally level. So here are a few tips. First, if you set up and then either you're looking through your polar scope or your software package and you don't even see Polaris uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, you're not even seeing it in the screen, uh, you may have to end up actually physically moving your mount. Hopefully not. You know, you can use the azimuth adjustment and the altitude adjustment, but if it's really far off, you may find that you're gonna run out of room on the azimuth setting, uh, which is the east-west setting, uh, and you just don't wanna have to go through all this process and then end up uh, running out of room. So you may have to end up actually physically sort of moving the mount. Hopefully that's not gonna be the case. Hopefully it's not a really heavy telescope that it's gonna be difficult to do because it may require that you uh, disassemble your telescope and reset it, but generally just kind of moving it just a little bit is, is okay. Second thing is when you're doing adjustments, don't completely loosen the axis and then tighten it up at the end. What you wanna do is you want to loosen the axis bolts and then snug them up a little bit uh, so that you still can uh, adjust the axis, but it has some drag to it. Later on, you're gonna, we're gonna talk about that you want to use an iterative process uh, to adjust and then tighten and then adjust again. When you do your altitude and azimuth adjustments, you want to do this in only one direction. So the idea is that you move it in one direction until you're done and completely tighten everything down. This helps to avoid backlash and other issues uh, in the adjustments themselves and it just makes it a lot more accurate and easy to do. It's a good uh, procedure to follow. So with your altitude, you want to actually use uh, an upwards direction um, to adjust the altitude upwards as your one direction. So you're adjusting up, 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 and then you're gonna finish locking it down. Uh, if you overshoot, just kind of dial the altitude back and then continue again to go up, 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 up in the iterative process. With the azimuth, the direction is less important. You can do east or west. Uh, I personally prefer east, it makes really no difference. But again, you just wanna adjust in one direction and if you overshoot, just kind of dial it back and then start over again. The next recommendation is to take an iterative approach to tightening the bolts. So as we mentioned before, you, what you don't wanna do is completely loosen the bolts, do your altitude and azimuth adjustment and then completely tighten it back up. Uh, that's gonna introduce a lot of uh, error into your final polar alignment. So instead, what you wanna do is, as mentioned before, you wanna loosen both of these axes. You wanna then snug them up a little bit so that you can still move them, but there's a bit of drag. And as you go through this process of adjusting the polar alignment 
As you get closer, you want to tighten them up a little bit. And then again, adjust a little bit, tighten them up a little bit, adjust a little bit, tighten them up a little bit. And you're going to find that this approach of using only one direction plus this iterative tightening, adjusting, and tightening is going to give you the best result. And as you get used to it, it's going to end up being very, very fast for you to do. My last tip is that when you tighten the adjustment bolts, you want to try to tighten both at the same time, either in altitude or in azimuth. Uh, and again, we're doing an iterative approach, so you, you tighten them just a little bit at, at a time. But doing both sides at one time tends to minimize any sort of uh, rotation or other things that you would accidentally introduce into your polar alignment. This is where things like the altitude knobs um, help because you don't have to use an additional wrench. You can just sort of grab these knobs and kind of turn them a little bit. Of course, with the azimuth knobs, they already are um, thumb style knobs, so you can do that very easily. This is not a super critical thing, but I think you're going to find that taking this approach is going to really minimize when you throw off your polar alignment by just tightening one side versus the other. If you don't have the knobs for altitude, it's okay. You might look at getting uh, an additional wrench of the same size and just kind of tightening them both at the same time as well. Once your polar alignment is complete, there are a few tips I have for after you finish this polar alignment. So whatever process you've used, now everything's tightened down and you're ready to go. It's a good idea to reset the mounts into counterweight down position and power cycle your Gemini if in fact it was turned on. Um, you can either do this by loosening the clutches and just kind of physically moving it, or if it's actually active, uh, you maybe started the mount up, you can use the park command, and then again, I would power cycle it uh, so that you can restart it in a uh, cold start position and just know that your mount is going to recognize the new counterweight down position as the accurate position. If you started the Gemini to use the motors to slew the telescope, such as if you're doing rotating around the poles uh, using the Pole Master app or the Sharp Cap app, which is fine again, you definitely want to make sure that after you're doing polar alignment, you're going to park the telescope and then cold start it again. And the reason you want to do this is because you want that position to be accurate uh, at cold start. Otherwise, if you just start it up, adjust your polar alignment, uh, now your, your position for counterweight down is going to be different than what you started up at and your pointing accuracy is going to be inaccurate. Yeah.